Hello and welcome to Lonnie's. What I'm going to talk to you about today is main lines for your reels when sea fishing, especially be or predominantly beach fishing basically, that's what I'm going to concentrate on um, and what the options kind of are out there to kind of guide you as best you can to making your choices um, without going into too much detail and confusing you even further than you may already be. Um, so to start with, predominantly most of us use a standard monofilament um, this one here is 15 pounds. We might use a shock leader on that as well. Uh, 15 pound 0.35 monofilament. Pretty standard. We've pretty much probably all used it off the beach, uh, whether that be for a multiplier or a fixed ball, whether it be that breaking strain or slightly different breaking strain. We've probably always used this already in our fishing. Does a very good job, very strong, does what it needs to do. We've then also got some sort of more high tech mono which is generally a lot thinner for its breaking strain. So this one here is, um, is also 15 pound breaking strain, slightly over because of the conversion, and it's 0.25, so a lot thinner, um, but obviously which aids us in some ways, but reduces some of the other properties from the other one. And the other one is braid, uh, getting used more and more in, in beach fishing, as well as other um, disciplines of angling as well. It's very thin for its strength. This is 0.15 for a 36 pound braid. Um, but there are a few things to consider and just because something's the thinnest for the strongest doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work um, for what you need it to do all the time. Um, it'd be simple if it did, it'd be great if it did. It'd be easier for us all if it did, but unfortunately it doesn't. So to start with, the standard mono, really strong for its break constraints. So you get, get, retain good knot strength on a kind of standard, what we call a standard mono. So something like, this is uh, the Axia monofilament. You've got like Darwin sensor, big game, all classic lines that are really solid, not really well, aren't the thinnest lines out there for the breaking strain, but just do what they need it to. They're really good. They've got a lot of stretch in them as well. So a lot of give, a bit harder to break sometimes, um, but just do what we need to do. It's a bit, quite a forgiving line in that sense. The more specious lines are a lot thinner, have a lot of give in them still, but not necessarily as forgiving in the sense that, you know, we, you have to be mindful of more knots you're using. Um, and also it's thinner as well. So if you're getting a lot of weed pick up or you're fishing a snaggy rough ground, then it's because it is naturally thinner, although it's going to be a hard line um, for abrasion, it's not going to be quite as good as the, as the sand monos. And then there's the braid. It's extremely thin. It's extremely direct as well. Um, so it helps you with bite detection, um, line lay on the reels because of thinness, distance that you can cast because of its thinness as well. And because it's low, like virtually no stretch on braids, um, it, it com helps you compress the rod easier as well. The downside to the braids is that it can be too direct at times. So there are times when we go fishing um, that, you know, it, it might, be we're fishing for some whiting on local beach in the winter because that's the weather's against us and that's all we can go for. That this will actually hinder you hook up, hooking the fish um, because it's too direct. So you need a sometimes you need a slacker line and the monos, whether it be the low diameter, high high spec monos or the standard monos, are more geared for that. So it just you know just that one example just shows that you can't necessarily use a a line all the time. I mean, you can do, but it's not going to be perfect 100% of the time. So it's always worth considering on what your usages are as well. Also, again, it's with your tackle as well. So if you're using a multiplier, a really thin braid or thin line can actually hinder you with the casting, increase your um, chances of bird's nests. Um, where, and whereas a fixed ball, that wouldn't be a problem. Also, if you've got a, a heavier rod, than say some of these continental style rods that we're all using nowadays, which are brilliant. The, the, the braids uh, in lumpier conditions can sometimes move the tip too much because there's not the give there, there's not the cushion of the give. So it, it's, it makes it harder to register a bite on your rod as well. So there is just some little things to, to kind of factor in. Um, personally, I use braid as well as the monos um, and I use both monos. So the reason is because here on the south coast, if you've been here before, Hurst, great venue. You can use a, any state of the any state of the year. You could use different ones of these. But when there's a, a lot of weed around, you kind of really want the heavy duty mono. The braid does help um, cut through some of that as well. 
So it'd be, for me, it'd be the braid or the heavy duty mono for that kind of heavy hauling of that dead weed. It, it, unfortunately, it's something we have to live with around here, but not all year, thankfully. On the other beaches, I'll use the low diameter monos where there might be a bit of weed, but not as much. And I just want to make sure I can bully that through. Again, the braid does work, but if I'm on a beach where I'm losing fish because of the bites, um, because it's too direct, then, then that would be what I do there. So um, yeah, it just, again, it's just not looking at the conditions, looking at the, the gear you're using from the, the rod, the reel, the beach that you're fishing and kind of going from there. So, but uh, all of these products that you can get on the market are, are normally fantastic. Knot strength is something that is something worth considering. So make sure you're tying a good knot and all these lines should do what you need it to do. Um, but unfortunately, there isn't like a one, one, one kind of one fits all, unfortunately answer. Um, not that you, you can do that if you want to, but you know, to, to increase your sort of fishing experience each time and the enjoyment of it, it's sometimes worth just, you know, rather than going, all right, I'm going to the latest technology, dial it back a bit to the standard lines and that can fit the requirements a bit more on the conditions on that given day. Hope that helps and apologies if I've confused you even further. Good luck. See you soon.